Smart art is Word's most powerful tool for visually communicating text-based ideas. This is our deep dive into everything about creating smart art. Hi, this is Les McCarter from Power of Training, where I turn my Microsoft Office decades of experience over to you for free. This is the second of our three videos on smart art. If you're new to this tool, then check out our first video because we're going to go deep and cover all the controls and stylistic choices, plus how to manage individual objects to make them shine. Looking for a specific topic? Then leverage the chapters listed below in the YouTube play bar. The third tutorial after this is going to focus on selecting the best of over 200 layouts. In our specific tutorial here, I'm going to be demonstrating smart art on a PowerPoint canvas because it's bigger and easier for you to see. But it's exactly the same. And if you want to make sure, look at our YouTube video up above here, and it's going to show smart art commands in Excel, PowerPoint, and Word going side by side. You'll learn it once, and you can use smart art everywhere in Microsoft Office. But for now, let's power up and learn everything about smart art. I'm assuming you've watched the first of our YouTube videos on smart art. And if not, you should be comfortable with these concepts before going forward. Smart art is a clever way to represent your ideas in a visual format, whether it be a list, a process, a set of relationships, and more interactive combinations. Each type of relationship can be represented by smart art layouts and different layouts have both limitations and capabilities as it pertains to text and bullet points. If you're light on these concepts, go watch part one of our YouTube series listed below. Otherwise, let's get going. In this deep dive tutorial, we'll be covering all the different menu choices for creating and managing smart art and focus on customizing the text, the color, the style, and changing layouts midstream to meet your needs. Next, we'll look at all the specific controls you have and what you should and should not touch with each element inside the smart art object. There are two main menus for managing smart art. Once clicked, these context aware menus will appear. The first is the smart art design menu and secondly, the format menu. The third item found inside the home ribbon menu is the convert to smart art, which I'm showing, but it is dimmed out because we have no text highlighted. More on this shortly. Let's examine the three ways to insert smart art into a slide. First, you need to be in the target slide and then go to the insert ribbon menu tab and find the insert smart art action item. Then choose a layout and click OK. There it is. But let me undo the object and insert it the second way. If your empty slide has a placeholder, it may show eight dim icons for you to select from. Second from the right of the top row is SmartArt. Look carefully below while I click that icon and up pops the layout selection menu. The third method I hinted at a few moments ago, convert to SmartArt. This time I've highlighted my existing text and then I go to the home menu and select convert to smart art. It's a great way to add punch to text on an existing slide. In a smart art object, text can be entered by two methods, either in the pop out text frame or directly inside the object. Let me quickly go ahead and convert this into a smart art object from existing text. I'll choose one of the layouts that we saw moments ago. And in here, we're going to find that when I click the expansion box arrow, that I can put my text into the text frame by just clicking and typing, or I can go into the text box. However, when working in the text frame, it seems simpler for me to go ahead and add in new lines. And what I do here, you'll see that the object expanded to accommodate line three and line four. And if we go to line three and do a tab key to do an indent, it'll actually start to add in additional bullet lines, A and line B. However, as I continue on to add in another bullet point, either inside the text box or in the actual text frame, I'm going to find that the fonts are getting smaller and smaller. And while it will work, 
it is not visually compelling. And so we do need to be careful not to push it too far. As we just experienced, not all layouts will enhance our message. But the great thing about smart art is that you can change the layouts midstream. Here's an existing smart art that just does not work visually. There are too many steps to match the layout design. But let's try out some different layouts by making sure we click on smart art design and then we can just move our mouse over some of the suggested ones and actually see them in place without clicking. You do the drop down list and there are even more recommendations for that specific category. But if you want to see more, you need to go to the more layout sections at the bottom. And fortunately, when you go there, the different category choices will no longer preview them. You will just have to look, pick and choose. With over 200 layouts in Office 365, it can be overwhelming to know what to select. But find our next video in this series for help on how to make those selection decisions. For now, we're going to go ahead and work on a process as this is not a cycle. So let's see if we can find one there that might work. This one looks cool. Or maybe not. It does not fit our message and the text is too small. So let me just go ahead and undo that and we can try another one. Hmm. This one seems like it might fit bigger text. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, but wait, the layout has a built-in limitation of showing only five lines. Take a look down below and it shows that it only accepts certain lines and puts red X's next to the lines that it cannot fit. What you're now witnessing is the experimentation phase of SmartArt. While the tool can speed up the creation of professional looking graphics, it does require you to experiment with different choices that matches your message. Layouts are influenced by the amount of text lines and the number of group of indentations included in your slide. So do allow the time to try on different layouts and don't get married to one layout because it looks cool. Always have your slide message goal in mind and have it supported by the graphics, not the other way around. The next choice is color. I find it best to find the right colors right after selecting the layout. Before we go too far, you need to understand that PowerPoint uses two color palettes. One is the design template theme colors, plus the always constant standard colors combined together. They present you the choices to choose from. To better understand colors and PowerPoint, look at our detailed YouTube tutorial on PowerPoint colors. With the object selected and Smart Art Design menu selected, we can then choose change colors and be presented with the existing design color palette collections. No way to change them individually. This use of the collections help you stay consistent. But what if you really want something different? Then you need to go to the design menu and select colors to find a different palette. Once again, look for our other detailed tutorial on PowerPoint colors to learn more. So I'm in the design menu and colors. Now, as I hover over the different palettes, I can see on the side the impact it has on my smart art. Let me choose one and then revisit the change color for our smart art. So what is this primary theme colors of accent one and two and three? It comes from the earlier selected color palettes as seen here in our tutorial pop-up. Colors are assigned to the names of accent one through six, and they are then tied to our color choices in the smart art color area. As you see, colors is a whole new topic. One more color topic, but we need to introduce a new layout, one that can accommodate images. Let me change this layout to a picture layout that will let me add some photos. Once it's applied, I then need to click inside each circle on the photo placeholder, and I will then bring in some PowerPoint Office 365 stock images for each of the three circles. I'm purposely choosing photos that don't match my topic, but ones that are colorful so we can soon make them match our smart art color scheme. Photos are red and pink and black and white. Watch when I go to change colors under the smart art design and select recolor pictures in smart art graphics. All of a sudden, 
they all match our overall color theme. And if I now change our Smart Art color option to say colorful, then the individual photos automatically are recolored to match their individual groupings. That is pretty cool. Now on to the last Smart Art style choice, Gallery Styles. Gallery of changes can be subtle or radical. Click on the Smart Art object and then the menu Smart Art Design, then drag your mouse over the gallery to see the proposed changes. Make sure you click the drop down arrow to see the full list. The individual changes are sometimes hard to make out as it impacts the line width, drop shadows, box outlines. But once you go to 3D, it becomes much more radical. And in my opinion, it sometimes goes from subtle to way overboard. No matter what, I do recommend that you use the same style in all your slides within a single slide deck. Up to this point, we've been dealing with the full smart art object, meaning that the changes impact the collection of individual elements as a collective. Now let's see how to change the individual elements. Still working with the smart art design menu, we'll now focus on the action icons on the top left corner. With the Kim box selected, I'm going to choose add shape and then try a variety of add shape after, add shape before, add shape above, and add shape below. And if you watch carefully and see the empty boxes pop up, you'll see this actually showing up also in our text pane. So you could just as easily go into the text pane and insert new lines and indent and outdent to do the same thing with this tool. It's nice though to see it visually. If you want to see how we built this from scratch, do refer to our first video in this series. For now, I'm going to go ahead and undo and show you one special items that is specific to the hierarchy org chart. I'm going to give our finance head dot an assistant, which is neither a box above or below or to the side. So I click on dot. I'm going to go up there and choose add shape, but there's a special shape only for org charts and that's called add assistant. When I click on that, it will drop an assistant underneath dot. And if you look carefully in our text box, there's a curious right hand arrow that indicates an assistant. So we can put in Harrow, Harry and give Harry the title of assistant. Let's look at another action icon, which is called right to left. Look at our org chart, pay attention to CPA one and CPA two. When I go up there and switch right to left, they flip flop. And now everyone that was on the right on the left, see CPA two and CPA one and Dave and Kim swap spot. If I click it again, they go back. So once again, that's a nice way to be able to flip things around. You can also change the layout for your org chart, but you'll see that different layouts have different components, some losing the title and others let you add in a photo of your individuals within the org chart. For a small company or department, the PowerPoint Smart Art Design org chart works out great. While the advantage of the Smart Art object is a collective holistic design, you may want to alter a very specific objects. Let's use dot as an example. With your element selected, I will now go to the format menu item, which is to the right of the smart art design menu choice. And there I can make the dot box smaller with each click one, two, three, four. Note that to keep the overall look, the font size of the whole object is shrinking consistently, but only the box around dot is shrinking. And I now can click, click, click to make dots box larger. I can also go in and change the shape to make her box more distinctive. With a selected, I do change shape, choose a specific rectangle and look, it now has some slanted corners. Now within the shape style, I can actually go in and change the characteristic of the box based off some of the preset styles. And if I want more styles, I'll click the down arrow to see the full list. Fortunately, as I scroll my mouse over each item, it gives me a preview of what is going to look like. Personally, I like a consistent look, but there may be situations where you want to highlight a very specific box. 
And of course, you can use the Word Art Style Gallery box to look at different font effects for a dot by hovering and then clicking to select. While not technically a smart art tool, you can use a format painter found under Home to be able to copy one format to the next. Select the source object that you want to copy the format from, go to Home, choose Format Painter, and then click on the target object and it will bring over all of the looks. There you go. You can now master everything about SmartArt. Do check out the next video on choosing the proper layout for all of your idea transformations. If this was helpful, do like it and share it with friends and coworkers. Also, please subscribe to help encourage me to make more free tutorials for you. Leave comments and questions below, including requests for any specific word tutorials that you'd like for me to make for you. And if you want to see all of our free training, then visit our full free Microsoft Office School at power-up.training. Until then, go power up.